a Apophis here. I think we'll actually run this video a little differently than usual. So today I'm going to talk about why I think 117 is a really great level to invade at in Elden Ring. Basically the biggest perk is that you could avoid the meta level. And what do you mean by meta level? Well, let's define that as the level that everyone agrees on for co-op and PvP. So, in the demo for the Shadow of the Erdtree DLC, the staff had set the demo character's level to 150, so a lot of people immediately jumped onto this train. So, for the most part, if you're in the arena or you're trying to find random co-op, 150 is an extremely reliable level to be at. This means that the majority of people who are camping for invaders are going to be sitting at that meta level. And what we're trying to do is avoid that situation. So 117 is pretty nice because you can invade from 105 to 148. And with a maxed out weapon, you can invade a range of plus 19 weapons to plus 25 weapons. And what this means is that you will be invading people who are generally just playing through the game. And that's sort of like the experience that was typical of playing older Souls games and invading. The majority of your invasions would not be against three-man or four-man gank squads. You would probably fight two, maybe three people playing through the stage and be able to use the terrain and enemies to your advantage. A lot of the time the situation in Elden Ring is that you invade into a three-man squad, they're out in a big open area, and your best option is basically to run until one of them isolates themselves, or you can find a patch of enemies to distract them. But if they're just going to wait there, there's not much you could really do if you don't have a setup that can one-shot. I guess the other bit that I would talk about is that Level 150 made things a little crazy. At 150, you have a soft cap scaler stat, so let's say 80 strength or 80 dex, you know, 80 everything. Or you could run, let's say, 50 int, 50 faith, and have a huge FP pool by just stacking mind. And the other part of that is that when we're talking about having these soft cap stats, and extra casting ability, extra L2 spam. Our survivability overall has not increased that much. Yes, you probably can equip heavier armor, but your total amount of HP will still be hovering around 1.9 to 2000 HP. Maybe a little more if they start with Crimson plus three and remove the talisman once they take damage, but the majority of players are not talisman swapping. You're not going to play that sweaty. And another reason I like 117 is that I'm actually having to make decisions in my builds. I found that the majority of the 150 builds that I was making, I had an excess amount of points, and those would either go into overcapping a stat, mind, or endurance. The core structure of the build didn't change. I really didn't have to give up anything. I was just adding more damage onto a build that already had high damage. I'll give Elden Ring one thing. Much like Dark Souls 2, it has a high degree of build expression, meaning that your main scalar stat is very represented in your weapon arts, or Ashes of War, excuse me, and what spells and abilities your character has. So it's pretty obvious to who's running a faith build, who's running an int build, a strength build, or a dex build. And that's all good. But on the other hand, time to kill is just so low that you don't feel like you're really expressing much skill. I think at like 35 mind, you have near 200 FP. That's an insane amount of L2s, an insane amount of abilities flying across the screen every few seconds. No, multiple times a second. And to me, that like completely de-emphasizes the usefulness and interestingness of the normal movesets. 
and I can't necessarily blame players for that. The game was designed in such a way that jump attacks and pressing L2 are just way more efficient at doing damage than the majority of your kit. There's also no more hit confirms for the majority of weapons between one normal attack and another. This causes the meta to shift to be poking and then using L2 to whiff punish. And I'm not going to say that you don't do that at this level range. What I will say is that overall, it's a more relaxed experience because you're not necessarily against super sweaty players. So I have the opportunity to play stuff that's kind of off meta. Like let's say Knight's Greatsword, which has now been pretty much superseded by a lot of other options. Greatswords in general don't have a lot of quote, pursuit potential. They can't approach very easily. So normally outside of the arena, I wouldn't want to play one. But in these situations, I could still fool around, have fun, and uh, experiment with some other weapon types that I wouldn't want. And to address a previous point, this doesn't mean that you're never going to run into a gank. It's just maybe, let's say, one out of six games versus being 70, 80% of games at 150. Like at 150, and I've showcased this in previous videos, you could end a fight in three moves, and that just simply wasn't possible outside of glass cannon setups in older games. I think that in a future Souls game, I want to see lower damage between players. It's actually kind of ridiculous how high damage is in Elden Ring in general. I don't think people learn that much from any experiences in this game, to be perfectly honest. But being at this level where you are making meaningful decisions to your build, your opponents have a wide variety of strengths, and you have the ability to still be, I would say, quite competitive in your character's strength. It's a good spot to be in. Anyway, if you made it this far, then Thanks for sticking around, and I'll have another full build video next week. Alright, I'll see you guys next time.